Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's adventure where we are getting back out on the John boat with our brand new little Mercury four-stroke motor. Now, excuse the uh, the mess that we got going on. It is extremely windy today. You probably can hear it. It's uh, blowing me around. It's 17, 18 mile per hour winds. We're back here at the old Faithful location, the underpass where we've brought this boat multiple times, and we've tested basically everything that we have on this boat. So we, you know, we figured why not come right back here, right back to home. Um, it is looking dreadful out there, guys. Let's take a look at that. Once again, white caps, 17 mile per hour winds. It is horrible, but we're gonna go ahead and try to give it a sin today. Maybe we can make a little how-to video for this motor because I was on YouTube the last few hours uh, of yesterday and I couldn't find any good videos about this thing except for some guy that is a uh, foreign. Uh, good video, bro, I like that one. Everyone else, they didn't really give us any information to show us how to use it, so today, that's what we're gonna be trying to do. If you're not into my channel, into fishing and stuff like that, uh, at least today you're gonna learn a little bit more about this motor, so let's get to it. All right, guys, so this is going to be our first attempt getting this motor running. Now, um, this is not a brand new motor. We picked this up from a gentleman on Craigslist. Notice there's a few little blemishes on this motor, and it does have its run time. So this is going to be our first time figuring out if, if it even works, I guess. There we go. There we go. There we go. Water, yeah, this needs it needs to warm up. Hey! Oh, there goes that four-stroke smell. I wanted to smell. Alright guys, so real quick I'm gonna walk over these steps and show you how to start up the motor. Ours is already warm, so you might have to let it run a little bit in the water before you actually get this thing going. The best thing to do to check that is kind of run your hand underneath the water that's uh, pouring out in the back that cools the engine down. If it feels a little bit warm, then you know this engine's good to go. So first thing you want to do is make sure you have that key installed. That's the only way to keep this in. This is that kill switch right here. When you start the engine cold, you want to have the choke all the way out. If you've already started the engine, you can push that choke in. It makes it a little bit easier. Right now we're in neutral. Our gas line is off. It's over here on the left side. We're going to go and turn that on. And we're going to go ahead and open up the little gas vent up here so that way we can have some oxygen flowing into the actual uh, compartment. We're going to go to restart because this is actual uh, a restart. Our engine's already warm. And we're going to go ahead and just try to give it a yank real quick and see if we can get this thing started on the first try. There we go. Once you get this thing started up like that, you'll leave it in start. Make sure this engine kind of warms up a bit. I would say maybe 10 minutes of running. And then once you get that going, you're gonna go ahead and hit this neutral to drive mode. Once you do that, the engine's gonna tilt back naturally. So just a heads up. I'm gonna make sure we're not gonna bump into anything real quick. Tilt that back. As you can see, the engine's starting to push us a little bit already. Just like that, we're getting pushed. Try to keep us away from this wall that we're right next to. We got our gas line open. We got our vent open. We got our choke all the way in. We got our uh, engine in forward mode. Now from there, all you do is you let it rip. You want to jump over this restart section. If you hit the restart, it might kill your engine. We're gonna turn it up and line us up with some uh, straight water real quick. And then we're just gonna go ahead and let it rip. Right now this is full blast. I'm gonna kind of bring it down a little bit. When you're using this motor for the first time, you want to make sure that you don't overrun this engine. You don't want to leave it on full blast for more than five minutes. There's a certain amount of hours. I'll, I'll leave it right here below. But once you hit those hours, that is when you want to actually start letting this motor run. This thing's been used for four years. We picked it up used, like I said, once again. Um, so we know that it's had the, the time to run out there. And on top of that, um, we've talked to the guy. He made us feel a little bit more comfortable, you know, get out here and just ripping this thing. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, make our way to the north part of the lake real quick I'll show you guys how this thing uh, looks burning out I guess across the lake and maybe get to some fishing and uh, then we'll do a, a recap and an overview of everything on this motor so that way you guys know exactly what you need to do to get this thing on the water going and uh, what you want to do to actually stop the motor too because there's a few little techniques you want to do to make sure you keep that carburetor clean and the longevity of this motor running uh, you know long and strong so let's go and rip it to the north side and get going Yeah, no 
bad joke. Alrighty guys, just made it all the way to the other side of the lake. We're gonna try to fish over here a little bit. Have a little bit of fun. Let's see if they make the most of this dreadful windy day. Our trolling motors are gonna help us putt with the wind and our big motors will help us get over here. Our uh, fish finders not working today, unfortunately, so we're gonna have to do without that. But we're gonna try to get us over here into this little calm little slip. Smack. Oh, I think he, oh, he's on my drag, my drag. Rip him in, rip him in. Let's go. <laughs> Woo, little dink. <laughs> my drag is just, he has like a herpes. Ooh, Ooh, damn, he is ugly. Yeah, you don't Zombie fish, what is that? Guys, got us on on the Grass Hero with the little Carl's Amazing Cross, a trailer flipping into that brush pile right there. I felt him thump thump. And uh, he's got a little zombie cheek, but I'll uh, appreciate every little fish I can get today. First fish done for the day. He's actually still just chilling. He's like, hey, what's up? Okay, everyone, so we're back here at my house. Got the motor right here behind me. I just wanted to go and do a little bit of a maintenance talk with you guys. We got off the water yesterday and it was just, I mean, it was extremely windy. We both actually had to get in the water and uh, kind of load this boat up on the on the trailer because that wind was just whipping that tail around and it, it was an absolute mess. Uh, luckily, the water wasn't, you know, below 35, so it wasn't too harsh on us. Uh, but I did want to just kind of talk about this motor real quick and tell you guys a little bit more about the maintenance that you're going to want to do on this motor or at least the storage uh, process. You know, when you're getting off the water, the one thing you don't want to do with these motors is leave gasoline in them because that's what's going to get the carburetor dirty. Um, there's a few techniques that you can do to go ahead and clean this carburetor out. One thing that you can do is you can just tighten up this choke up here and uh, you're going to go ahead and just crank that fuel on the off switch. And essentially what will happen is that, uh, that fuel line will just drag out and uh, all the fuel that is in the carburetor will just burn out and essentially you'll have a clean carb come back, store it, you can pump the fuel out after that. A lot of times you just don't want to leave fuel inside these things. It causes corrosion, the fuel will separate, uh, it gets watery, and then when you start running this motor, it'll kind of clog and it, it just causes all sorts of mess. So if you're gonna be storing it, um, I would say not getting on the water uh, at least once a week, at least maybe bi-weekly, at least running it at your house, uh, you are gonna to wanna to go ahead and take all the fuel out of it. So now that we've talked about the carburetor and kind of storing it and removing the fuel, all that important stuff, I just wanna go ahead and do one last little uh, walk through of the actual motor kind of talk about a little bit more of these small little things that you don't see out there on the water Right here is gonna be a little swivel adjustment that actually helps uh, you know the motor turn if you have it a little bit tighter It's gonna be a little bit harder to turn if you have it looser. It's gonna be a lot easier to turn There's another little adjustment right here on this handle and basically that's gonna help you kind of turn the gas real easy or a little bit harder um, the motor, you're always going to want to go ahead and leave this side up if you're laying it down sideways. Um, usually if you're storing them, you're going to want to store them vertical. It's just better for the motor. You got the little cap right here. Open this thing up and uh, you can see it's a nice pretty motor. It's a, I believe it's like a one gallon tank or like 1.3 liters. I don't got much gas in there at all. I don't think if any. Uh, so we're actually good. We're going to just probably pop it up and store it, but we'll probably get back out there on the water real soon and start fishing it again. Um, but on this side, on this side we have our, uh, our fuel switch. This is gonna be the on off. As you can see, it even states right here above it. Once again, we got that oil gauge, we got the neutral and forward. I will say once you hit that forward switch, that's when the uh, rest of the motor will start tilting into the water. That's something I didn't really know until we got out there on the water and uh, it did kind of bang up the rear of the boat. Um, but on top of that, we got the choke right here. If you're doing a cold start all the way out, slowly ease it in and uh, until that motor is nice and warm. You got the little uh, tightening knobs right here. You got our key. I just leave it right here for storage purposes. And then you got your little key switch. You got your pull chain for starter. You got your gas knob. And uh, you got your little propeller, your little prop. I will say the one thing I don't like about this motor is that it comes with a plastic prop. Uh, you're probably going to want to upgrade that, get an aluminum prop. I did see them on Amazon for about 30 bucks. So we'll probably pick one of those up and uh, give it a go. But that is going to be it for today, guys. 
Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you learned a little bit about this motor. If you did find it helpful at all, make sure you leave me a thumbs up. It helps out my channel a lot. Uh, and if you want to subscribe to the channel as well and join my journeys, getting out there on the water, fishing this thing, and do a little bit more, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. But that is going to be it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you all in the next one. Peace.